every air base in Iran, fully armed jet fighters wait outside their blast-proof hangars. Their pilots are within sprinting distance. Within minutes of the siren, they'll be airborne. These drills go on every day. The Iranians have reason to take them seriously. Iran may be America's last friend in the Gulf, but she does not lack potential enemies. Iran sees herself as surrounded by unstable and not so friendly neighbors. Despite good trade relations with Moscow, Russian planes continue to make high altitude reconnaissance flights over Iran. The Shah of Iran sees his massive investment in modern weapons as an absolute necessity. I think that the reasons are there, loud and clear. Wasn't Israel and uh, the rest of uh, the world surprised by the huge amount of weapons that were poured on her and which almost crippled her? I'm not taking any chances. The neighbor that Iran is most concerned about is Iraq, which here lies just across the Shat al Arab River. The Iraqis are both unpredictable and, thanks to the Soviet Union, heavily armed. Iran keeps most of its ground forces deployed along this border. Earlier this month, there was serious fighting along the border north of here. Recently, the Shah described Iraq's rulers as, quote, crazy, bloodthirsty savages and the feeling is mutual. The Shah thinks the Iraqis have too many weapons and that the most likely target for them is Iran. His patrol boats keep a constant watch on Iraqi activities. Well, to us, obviously anything that is loaded, it could be a threat, but uh, they better not because you cannot easily step on our toes. But uh, still, it's not, as you call it, a very secure border. On national holidays, troops all over Iran pass in review before the Shah's portrait. Uh, this is a uh, warship Zal. Uh, would you kindly spell your name? The Iranian missile frigate Zal makes a routine identification check of a passing tanker. For a century, British warships patrolled the Persian Gulf. Now, they are gone, replaced by an Iranian Navy, which in a few short years has grown from a glorified Coast Guard to a powerful strike force. We are Liberian flag, Liberian flag. This is warship Zal, Roger, thank you. This narrow neck of water is the Strait of Hormuz. Only 30 miles across, it's possibly the most vital stretch of water on Earth. The reason? Oil. Giant tankers pass here on an average of one every 11 minutes, carrying 20 million barrels of oil each day, including over 80% of Japan's total oil supply and nearly 60% of Western Europe's. The United States is also expected to become an increasing user of Persian Gulf oil. But the Strait is an artery that could easily become a disastrous bottleneck. The Shah is determined to keep the oil flowing, and the increasingly powerful Iranian Navy has become the de facto guardian of the world's oil lifeline. The Zal is one of the fastest and most powerful destroyer-type warships afloat. The Iranian Navy now has four of these vessels. They are full of modern electronic gear. Iran's present fleet is already the strongest navy in the Persian Gulf, and this is only the beginning. The Shah recently announced that Iran's naval strength will quadruple by 1978, and nearly a billion dollars worth of bases are under construction which will extend the Navy's operational area well into the Indian Ocean. We must be in the position to keep that strait open, if necessary, alone. 
These British-made chieftains are considered by many to be the most advanced tanks in the world. The Shah has ordered over 700 chieftains, and that's more than the British Army itself can afford. Recently, the Shah has spent $2 billion a year on weapons, nearly a quarter of the total national budget. There were complaints that military expenditures were hurting civilian development. But with the recent oil price increase, even his critics agree the Shah can afford both guns and butter. In the next few years, Iran will probably buy $9 billion worth of weapons from the United States alone. Do you consider Iran to have a relationship of special friendship to the United States? Indeed. Since some time now. How about in terms of cooperation between the armed forces of our two countries? Is that a continuing process? Oh, yes. And it will continue to be so because we have got to learn continuously. Okay, first we'll find the page for removing the tire. To help them learn, there are over 800 American military personnel in Iran. About 400 of them are technical specialists paid for by the Shah to teach his men how to operate and maintain the new equipment. Over 11,000 Iranian military men have already been trained in the United States, and hundreds more are here now. In addition to F-5s, Iran now has the largest force of Phantom Jets in the Middle East. And the Shah has just announced the purchase of 30 F-14 fighters, which are the most advanced jets in America's inventory. For the most part, the Shah's Air Force is strictly made in the USA. All of his pilots are trained in America. They spend more time in the air than most other air forces. well and they shoot well and like their Shaw they consider the United States a special friend your majesty would you like to see the United States play a greater role in ensuring the stability of the, the Gulf or should that be left totally to your own growing power <coughs> and, and the nations of the region I think it should be left to the nations of the region because first that no outsider should come in the region that this should be left in the hands of the riparian states of the Persian Gulf. 